Hello there, welcome to this short tutorial on how to start a flight with self loading cargo version 1.6. So, first screen you will see, uh, we're currently sat in the, the Phoenix A320 by the way, uh, so the first screen you will see is uh, welcome to self loading cargo, please choose the type of flight you wish to fly today. Now, there is only one option at the moment, which is an airliner flight. Um, we are currently working on the business jet flight. The only difference between the two really is that a business jet flight will allow you to fly an aircraft that does not or may not have a cabin crew on board, in which case you will be responsible for making some of the announcements that the uh, the cabin crew would make. And obviously uh, there will be no in-flight services. The passengers will be responsible for uh, for making sure that they, they sort of feed themselves, etc. Um, so for now we've only got the airliner flight available. So if, if you select that, you'll be taken to the setup screen for your your flight, your flight configuration window. And as you can see, there is a drop-down box for the type of aircraft. Um, we have currently got an A320 selected. And underneath that is the, all of the layouts belonging to that specific aircraft. So if I choose, say, the ATR, there's only one available for that one. And 737-800, there's a couple available for that one as well. If you want to install the, uh, any more layout, you can simply click Add More Aircraft Layout. That will take you to the new website where you can manage the cabin layouts that appear in your account. And you can either create your own or you can install ones that other people have created simply by clicking Install next to the one that you want to uh, have within your application. And once you've clicked on Install, it will automatically appear in the list. So for now, we're going to choose the A320 with the default cabin layout. Uh, there are no super or first class seats, but we do have 12 business class seats, uh, 18 premium economy seats, and 126 normal economy seats. So the next one is to choose the voice for our captain. Now, obviously you can use your own voice uh, if you want to use the voice control. If not, you can use button control or have self learning cargo operating in uh, sort of a completely automated fashion in which case with the buttons and the automation you will hear a pilot voice such as this one the default cabin crew seats for takeoff please or we could choose an american one all stations seats for takeoff please so you, you get the idea you choose the one that you uh, that will basically be the one that you hear in lieu of you using your own voice if you want to choose your own voice it doesn't matter which one you select but if you uh, click on the buttons or have it running automatically the voice you will hear will be the one that you pick from this list. Um, you can obviously change that at any point uh, during the flight by just going to the settings screen and uh, basically selecting the same box. And the same goes for the purser. Now, there is a slight difference. You can choose up to two voices and it's not sort of two voices uh, for two separate characters. It's basically, um, well, let me, let me explain. You select the primary voice, which is used uh, to communicate with the pilot Via the, uh, via the intercom, but you will also use this voice to communicate with the passengers. And then if you want to, you can have the same announcements repeated in a different voice. So you may have default for English. Thank you. In here she's just said thank you. Or you could have it in French. Merci. Or what you could have is English and French. So the announcements that the person makes to the passengers is in English and French. Thank you. Merci. But you will only hear, because she's talking directly to you via the intercom, you will only hear it in the primary voice. Of course, you can just turn that off if you just want uh, the person to speak in sort of American or, or, or English, but you do have the option to have the announcements to the passengers repeated in a, sep in a second language. Uh, it helps to create uh, a nice level of immersion, I think, if you're doing sort of international flights. Again, if you want to add more voice packs, click on this link and it will take you to the website where you can select uh, any voice pack you like that's available, download it, install it in the application and it will appear in these drop down lists. I'm going to use a, an English uh, an English purser, English cabin. And it, it allows you to sort of mix and match. So if you had an Irish captain and an Irish uh, purser, maybe that would increase your immersion if you were flying to Ireland um, and you could also have an American accent if you, uh, it, well, you, you could have an American cabin crew um, with a Spanish voice if you were flying from, say, I don't know, um, New York to Madrid. The choice is yours. And again, you can change that uh, at any time going to sense if you want to change the voice midway through the flight. Um, 
So the next thing is the airline sound pack. Now I have a few made up, these won't be included in the actual release version, um, but you can create your own sound packs. I, uh, I download some of the audio that's available on YouTube. Um, obviously they can't be distributed because it's copyrighted material, but self and Cargo does come with a default sound pack. And the sound pack includes cabin music, which is played into the cabin. But it also includes some digital announcements um, because it allows you to choose whether you want the purser to make dynamic announcements using the purser voice packs um, at specific points during the flight, say an after takeoff announcement where they, where they announce drinks um, or upcoming services or just after landing. But some airlines actually allow you to, um, uh, some airlines have pre recorded announcements that aren't made by the cabin crew but they just play over the uh, the PA system, ready for passengers. For instance, uh, EasyJet, they have, a, they have a, a series of announcements that get played uh, during boarding and just after landing. Um, Ryanair has a welcome uh, message every time they land, if they're on time. And self and Cargo supports that, and that is completely separate from the, the voice packs. It's now included in the airline sound packs. And self and Cargo comes with a, a default suite of its own, um, in lieu of the actual airline ones. But you are free, as you can see, to create your own airline ones uh, based on the announcements that you might be able to find online or if you can record them somewhere yourself and just bring them into the application and uh, Softload and Cargo will play them. But we're gonna keep it like this. We're gonna have an English cabin crew. Uh, we're gonna have an English uh, captain and we're gonna have the default sound pack. So that's our aircraft configured. We click on setup flight plan. Now, this you would probably be familiar with because it's vaguely reminiscent of the one that was in version 1.5. However, as you can see, it is a little bit more in depth. Um, we have the airline, the EasyJet, we have the flight number, the explanatory, the number of passengers, the luggage weight, that is automatically calculated based on the number of passengers that come in. However, if you click this button here to import your latest Simbri flight plan, it will import the number of passengers and the luggage weight from Simbrief. If you then adjust the number of passengers, it will attempt to create a, a realistic luggage weight. Now that's used for the uh, for the ground staff in in the uh, the time it takes to to load the aircraft while the passengers are boarding. The departure airport code and arrival aircraft code uh, airport code are self-explanatory. In fact, I'm going to click on import now. This will in import my previous flight, which was from Thunder Bay in Canada to uh, Toronto. Boost altitude in feet, 37,000 I've got. Now, the current simulator time is 22.18, and my departure time is 19.10, as you can see. Unfortunately, as you can see by the departure summary, that means that my flight is going to leave tomorrow, because 19.10 has already passed. So self and Cargo automatically thinks that uh, we're going to be leaving in about 20 hours. So you can see the departure board here flicking um, amongst, uh, uh, telling me how long it's going to be until boarding starts, loading starts, and the departure estimate. So that's obviously incorrect. We don't want to wait 20 hours before self and Cargo is expecting us to leave. So what we can do is we can increase the time or decrease the time using these links, or we can click this down arrow and we can say, I want to depart in 25 minutes or perhaps 30 minutes. Now you can see the departure board is all green. So we know that we basically left enough time to, uh, to actually depart and make sure everything's okay for the passengers. We can see all the information up here has been imported. Uh, Air Canada uh, Rouge, the flight number, the number of passengers, the luggage weight, and obviously all the departure and arrival aircraft airport codes that we need and we can see that the departure and the scheduled arrival time have automatically been filled out as well and as we increase that you can see that those values change because it knows the uh, the flight time that we have imported from from Simbrief. We are free to adjust this though so if I want to put 0050 in there that's fine and uh, that will just keep keep a record of it so anytime I, I click an adjustment it knows the uh, knows the correct flight time so if I hit in one hour 22.20 is the current time, 23.20 is the estimated, 
well the scheduled departure time and you can see check-in is in progress check-in opened two hours 20 minutes ago so we know that there's going to be some passengers already uh, already checked in the boarding is, is expected in 37 minutes so we're still quite a way off and uh, obviously loading the ground crew have calculated that it's going to that they're going to need to start loading the aircraft in about half an hour as well to make sure that they're on time and obviously our estimated earliest departure time is going to be about 10 past but the schedule is 20 past so we should be on time and once we're happy with that we can click in flight services to set up the aircraft cabin however if you want to depart immediately you could just click skip the boarding and loading phase and what that will do is it'll just automatically load and board the aircraft and we'll be ready to push back simple as that so if you don't want to go through the whole rigmarole of uh, of boarding the passengers and loading the aircraft you don't have to you can just jump straight in and uh, and get going so clicking on the in-flight services screen to advance it now right now you can see I've got a custom service schedule I'm just going to change this for the purposes of this demo I'll show you in a second so basically you can choose uh, a service schedule for your aircraft so if you're on a low cost you can select low cost short haul uh, and it will show you the generated service schedule of what is going to be on board your aircraft so we're going to have one drink service we're going to have no food service no alcohol no duty free and a movie will be playing as well based on the one hour 50 minutes block time that we selected if i want to choose a different one as you can see we've got a drink service dinner service a, a food service alcohol service no duty free um, and the movie service is still going to go ahead as well. You can apply some some level of time zone intelligence where self loading cargo um, determines which services would be available at specific times during the flight. So you can see it's turned off the movie because it thinks it's going to be too late and people are going to be wanting to uh, they're going to be wanting to leap without the movie playing. Um, this is a work in progress um, because it's quite complicated to sort of work out what time it's going to be locally when you're when you're flying the aircraft but you can turn it on and off if you if you if you don't want it to uh, if you don't want it to have an impact on the schedule um, if you want to have a fully custom uh, schedule though or well, having said that before we go through that you can actually customize these by just editing an XML file in your self-loading cargo uh, folder it's in flight services.xml and you can place your own presets here for the different levels of service so that you don't have to keep uh, continually selecting it because self loading cargo will remember the uh, the selection that you had from your previous flight but again you can hit custom and you can have full control at any time over the services get included so if I don't want food or alcohol or duty free I can just turn it all off um, if I want a drink service I can obviously enable it I can tell it that I want it 45 minutes after takeoff and then I can choose whether I want it to repeat or not and it will repeat every one hour 30 minutes if I put this too far across you can see that the drink service won't actually get served because it's too far ahead of our of our block time and there is a little bit of intelligence in there to try to determine whether a, a service will be able to be made based on the uh, the amount of time it's going to take to sort of descend etc but I'm going to put that to 10 minutes after takeoff and then every every one hour 20 minutes so we may get two drink services but that that is a maximum you can't just spam the services anymore to increase the passenger satisfaction so it's important that you plan your flights and uh, make sure that you've got enough time to have the services happening if you want to turn the movie off for instance you can do that as well if you don't want to repeat the drinks it'll just go down to one next phase is to choose the Wi-Fi installation um, now self loading cargo simulates different types of Wi-Fi and also no Wi-Fi at all but it does simulate air to ground which has a small amount of bandwidth and is only available while you are actually flying over um, a country where well basically land where there may be a cell tower that the aircraft can communicate with if you head out over the ocean the signal will deteriorate, the bandwidth will get lower and passengers will be unable to uh, use the Wi-Fi system because there will be no bandwidth, no, no signal and obviously they may get frustrated 
We also have two satellite bands. Uh, one is uh, higher bandwidth than the other, um, and one is more sensitive to fluctuations in the weather, so bad weather. So rain um, and cloud cover will attenuate the signal, and you may find that the, uh, say for instance, if you are on approach, the uh, the Wi-Fi may be unavailable to passengers um, sporadically if there is a large amount of cloud cover or rain, snow, etc. So you need to choose which, however the, the satellite is available while you are flying over uh, the oceans because obviously you don't need to communicate with a cell tower on the ground. Um, so yeah, you do need to select which Wi-Fi installation will be most suitable for your flight. And again, you don't have to fill this in, it will be preset from the previous uh, selection that you made on your last flight. And the last thing is the boarding protocol. Now this allows you to control uh, which passengers get boarded onto the aircraft first. So you can board from front to back, you can board from back to front, you can split from the center, so the center people would get uh, boarded first, you can do the right rows first, the left rows first, the higher classes first, so sort of first class, then business class, then premium, then economy. You can do via the passenger surnames alphabetically, either A to Z or Z to A, or you can just board people completely randomly. Now it's important to remember that if you, for instance, choose back to front and you have a door open at the front of the aircraft, it means that people are going to board at the front of the aircraft, but they will be seated at the back, so you'll get the rear passengers boarding first. Now, in the next version of self and Cargo, if you were to have an emergency, that may not be desirable because if you're, say, for instance, fueling and there's a fire, then you may find that... Uh, the passengers who are on board the aircraft take longer to get off and that may affect your rating if you have to evacuate the, f the, uh, the aircraft. So you may wish to board from the front first so that the, the people that are coming on board the aircraft are boarding and you have a, uh, there's a chance that the, ca that the ground crew will finish fueling before say half of the passengers are boarded, uh, have boarded the aircraft. So in the event of an accident or an issue where you have to evacuate the aircraft quickly the passengers will be nearest the exit um, that's available. And that is it. The next thing you would do would be to click Start Flight. Um, and when you click on Start Flight, self and Cargo will start preparing the uh, voice commands, etc., and getting you ready. And uh, depending on how long it is before the passengers are due to come on board and the ground crew, uh, the ground crew will connect to the aircraft, say hello to you, establish a radio communication link, and also the cabin crew will introduce themselves and uh, you just have to wait for them to be ready to start sending the passengers down. So that is how you start a flight with self and cargo. Thank you for watching.